Hey guys, how's it going? It's Mark. I'm now at the game and I'm gonna sit down at one, two. Let's run good, let's win some big pots, let's go. Here we go, I bought in for 500 bucks, but I'm already down after running top pair into a flop set on my very first hand. Thankfully, my opponent only had 100 bucks or so. So now we head into this six-handed drama hot bomb pot. I'm in the small blind and I get dealt jack, jack, seven, five, three. So I start with a pair of jacks in my hand and the flop comes five, jack, three, giving me top set. I actually don't really love this spot because in Dramaha, a flop top set is not going to win as often as in Hold'em. If a flush or straight comes in on the turn, I'm going to need the board to pair to improve to a full house. Problem is, I already hold two outs to a boat with the five and three in my hand. For my downhand, a pair of jacks most likely won't be good after we draw. Typically, when you start with a pair, you want to draw to trips. Problem is, one of my outs is gone with the jack on the board. With all that in mind, I can't quite bring myself to check with the nuts on the board. I lead out for 20, and I get calls from the big blind and the middle position player before the cutoff raises to 50. I thought about raising, but I don't think it's a plus EV move. If the board doesn't pair, I'm basically getting free rolled by the down hands containing flush and straight draws. So I decide to just call, and both the big blind and middle position player make the call as well. As mentioned before, there's not much I can do but draw three and hold on to my jacks. Turn comes the eight of spades and I draw an ace, king, and a six, so no help at all for the downhand, but I still got the board nuts. Action checks to the button continues for a hundred and I am still debating between calling and raising. Calling feels so weak with the board nuts and a weak downhand. This is typically a spot where you want to apply pressure on your opponents, but again, there's so many spots where I get called by a good downhand that's free rolling me on the board. I'm obviously not going to fold, so I make the call, and this time only the big blind comes along. I need the board to pair or a clean river to win half the pot, and the river comes the nine of hearts. We once again check the button who goes all in, and they cover. Super, super annoying spot because six seven now makes a runner runner straight. I didn't realize it at the time, but queen 10 makes one two. I think really hard about folding, but quite can't bring myself to it at this point. I'm way too invested in this hand. Sometimes my opponents are going to be fighting for the downhand. I don't love it, but I call for my remaining 245 and the big line quickly calls. Going to showdown, it looks like the button was blasting with the worst of it as they had a pair of sevens in their hand that rivered or straight with six, seven. Big blind shows two pair down, queens and tens. They also have the board nuts with the straight to the queen and I get scooped. What a warm welcome to the table. Okay, cool. So I've been sitting at the table for half an hour and I'm already down to buy-in. Nice. I reload for 500. I'm in for 1K. In this one, undergun limps and middle position raises to 10. The hijack and cutoff make the call before I look down at pocket jacks. Well, this is going to be fun. I feel like the best play is to take my cards, rip them to shreds, throw them in the bucket, pour some lighter fluid on them and set them on fire. But in game, I decide to three bet to 40. It folds back to the original Razor, who four bets all in for 168. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit tilted at this point, so I think to myself, well, it's not that much more to call. Plus, if they're the usual Portland player type, they won't have just aces, kings, or queens. They can easily be doing this with ace king, ace queen, pocket tens, pocket nines. I think it's close enough to a flip, so. Oh, I call. Oh, how many times want to run it? Your call. Oh, Jesus. Once or twice. Your call. Really? Yeah, each side. Let's do twice. I guess. Yeah. Take twice. Thank you, man. Ooh, good for me. Yeah. That's it. Right. Happy you did twice. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Ahmed for letting me choose how many times to run it, even though he had me crushed. That was really cool, and uh, yeah, I guess it worked out for him as I sucked out on the first board. I know a lot of people would opt to run it once here and try to hit the suck out, but Ahmed was very gracious to let me pick, so I figured, let's run two boards and whatever happens, happens. We end up chopping this one, and fortunately, I do not dig myself into a deeper hole. All right, strap yourself because this hand is going to get pretty spicy. We're playing an eight-handed, 522 bomb pot. I'm in the low jack with ace 10 10 6 6. Top flop comes deuce deuce 6 2 diamonds. Bottom comes ace 4 jack. I flop top boat on top, nothing much on bottom. Flopping top boat is cool, but when it's a low one like that in 522, you're not guaranteed to have top boat by the river. Also, it's not as rare for someone to flop quads in 522 as it is in hold'em, so it's unlikely, but I could already be crushed here. 
I don't have much on bottom, so yeah. Once again, very weird spot. Action checks to middle position player who bets 10. I have an easy call. The hijack button and undergun players make the call as well. The turn comes a safe three of spades on top and a 10 on bottom. I turn a set. Action checks again to middle position player who continues for 50. Top doesn't change. I still only lose to quads. I improve on bottom, but the 10 brings in the king queen straight. I mean, once again, I'm not really sure what to do. I think if I raise, I'm probably going to end up against the straight on bottom and we're going to chop what's in the pot. If I call, I can bring one or more players in the hand and there's a chance I could river the best hand in bottom pairs. So with that in mind, I go for a call and I do invite more players into the pot. This is how things develop. The hijack calls, the button goes all in for 270. Under the gun, tank calls for 115. Middle position, calls for 90. Yeah, sure, let's go, I call. And the hijack calls. There's around 1100 in the middle, three players all in. Me and hijack on the side, we're headed to the river, which comes a super clean four of hearts on top. And bottom does pair the 10. I river mother bluffing quads, man. So unless somebody has quad juices, I got nut nut. And that's a ultra. Oh, no, not again. Don't do it. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Why run out? <coughs> what a dream spot. <coughs> from a weird spot to the easiest decision in the world. Can I extract more value from this hand? I shove for 205 and the hijack. Anybody snaps? Does anyone have quads? Does anyone have quads? No? No? Let's freaking go, baby! I scoop a $1,500 pot. That's the biggest pot I've won since I started playing poker. I am not only unstuck, but up 500. This session has turned around in a big way. I'm barely processing what just happened that I get dealt pocket kings in the low jack in the very next shuffle. There's a limp before under the gun shoves for four. I race to 20. The cutoff calls all in for less. That kind of sucks because I think it's going to force the other players to tighten their calling range and so I could miss out on some value. But no, not a problem. Both blinds call, so we go three ways for the side to a flop of queen 7 7 2 spades. I'm going to see bet to 35 and both blinds fold. Turn comes a jack. River is another queen. I end up having the best hand and I take down the pot. All right, so little mid-session update uh, after getting stacked for 500 bucks in the matter of two hands within like 15 minutes of sitting down. Uh, was a little bit deflated, bought back in for another 500 and uh, yeah, just won what I think is the biggest pot of my life on this uh, double board on pot. So mixed emotions to start the session, but uh, now we're on the upswing, so let's keep going. Coming back to the table, and unfortunately, I hit a dry spell of cards while the action and weaker players are getting stacked and leaving. So we end up playing five-handed and there's not a lot of action. The only couple times I tried something in position, I faced resistance. So I am a little bit bored and annoyed when this hand happens. We're playing a drama hub bomb pot and four of us see a flop of deuce nine deuce rainbow. And I look down at nine eight six six five. I've got a pair of fives and a gut shot to a straight down and top pair on the board. Action checks around and I contemplate trying to make the straight, but it's a gut shot. If I was open-ended with 5, 6, 6, 7, 8, then I think getting rid of a 6 would be the right play, but in this spot, I decide to draw 3 and hold on to my 6s, not expecting much at this point anyway. The turn comes to 3 of diamonds, and I actually draw a third 6 along with king jack of spades, so I improve 2 trips down. The small blind now leads for 35. It's at this point I realize we're playing no limit, I usually play this game pot limit, Big blind folds, and I think for now I have an easy call, and I'm kind of hoping the button comes along, but they fold. We're going heads up to the river, which comes to 10 of clubs. There's 90 in the pot, and my opponent fires another bet of $200. $200? Yes. It's a very good bet. <clears throat> Call 200 to win 45. You have a boat on the board, probably. So yeah, you can see in the footage here, I'm well aware that this is a great spot for the small blind to blast with the board nuts and put pressure on me. 
They drew three cards, just like me, so it's unlikely, but not impossible, that my trips are beat. And I can't shake this thought of like, what if? What if 5% of the time they somehow have me beat? Well, let's do the math, shall we? Let's pretend I call. I said call to chop 90, but if you take out the money that the small blind and I put into the pot, we're essentially chopping the two other players' preflop ends, 10 bucks. So when I'm right, I net a $5 profit. When I'm wrong, I lose 200. Let me know if my reasoning is way off here, but I think my trips need to be good like 98% of the time for me to net five bucks. So that's what ultimately led to. Uh, I'm not gonna call it chop, listen. Yeah, yeah, you're the ball on board, yeah. Good job to my opponent for putting max pressure on me. Well done. Let's breeze through this one where action folds to the button who opens for 12, folds to me in the big blind with pocket fours, I make the call. The flop comes jack 3-9 rainbow, I check all my opponent's $13 c-bet, turn is an ace, with both check, river is another 3, we both check, and my opponent's pocket 10s take it down. Those were the two hands of note that I played in about an hour and a half. Finally, our table breaks, and we're moving to the other table, where we'll be playing nine-handed. Alright, so I've been running kind of card dead for the past hour, hour and a half. It's been pretty boring on the poker side of things. We're uh, moving to the other one-two table, so hopefully dynamics change and uh, we can win some big pots. I'm taking this uh, opportunity to get some air, take a breather, and uh, not fall victim to winner's tilt and start punting away. So staying patient, hopefully action picks up and uh, I'll see you in there. All right, so we're playing nine-handed and there's a couple of action players at the table. Let's see if we can turn things around. In this hand, middle position player opens to six, the low jack, three bets to 20, and I look down at ace queen in the high jack. I've been very quiet at the table so far. I'd like to play this hand in position against the low jack, so I four bet to 60. Folds back to the original razor who folds, and the low jack makes the call. This player has been involved in a lot of hands. They seem pretty splashy to me, but unfortunately, I've yet to see them show down a hand, so I'm proceeding with caution. As we go heads up to the flop, which I whiff so hard, I don't even take note of it. Needless to say, it's a middling, no pair, no draw, no backdoor kind of flop, and the low jack donk leads for 30. If pairing up gives me the best hand, I'm getting a great price to make the call. That being said, as I mentioned before, I'm not entirely sure what this player is doing, I should probably just call and give up to a bet if I miss the turn. I ultimately decide to fold, like I said in the mid-session update, after the early swings of this session I'd really hate to punt away my profits, so just gotta wait for a better spot, which hopefully comes soon. The very next shuffle, Under the Gun puts out a $10 straddle, which the player to my right calls. I peel Ace-10 off suit in the low jack and raise to 30. Could have gone for a bigger sizing here. The button calls and middle position once again makes the call. We go three ways to the flop which is another complete whiff. But once again, the player to my right donk leads for 30. I have a much easier fold in this pot, but getting a little bit frustrated, staying patient though. Five minutes later, this hand happens. There's a $5 button straddle. Action falls to me and I look down at pocket threes under the gun. I don't love limping because I think it just screams middling low pocket pair, but the way my raises and three bets have been treated, I don't really care, so I make the call. Unless there's a 3-bet, I'll be calling a raise to set mine. Middle position raises to 15, button calls, and I have an easy call here. We go three ways to a flop a 3, 10, juice. Patience pays off. I flop a set on the board on which I can get tons of value from over pairs, top pairs, and flush draws. Let's go. First to act, I think leading out is a little too strong. I have full confidence that one of these players is going to be putting money in the pot, so I start things off with a check. The hijack c-bets for 25, which the button calls. That's not quite enough for me. I want to get max value and protect my hand, so I check raise to 80. Hijack folds, but the sticky button makes the call. I have a super strong hand against an action player. This pot could get big. Let's see a clean turn. Dealer flips over the ace of hearts. No! This is another spot where I'm struggling to come up with a decision. I think the best move is probably to check call a bet from this particular opponent who has a ton of hands I beat in their range, but I'm thinking about what comes next. If the river is a non-pairing heart, I'll have an easy check fold, but what if it's a brick? Do I check call a three, four, five hundred dollar bet? I actually think I have another option, I don't use it very often, which is to block bet. If I check, I think my opponent is probably going to bet somewhere around 150. By leading for a smaller amount, they'll be calling with a lot of the hands I beat. If they raise, I'll probably and reluctantly fold. So I lead out for 80. My opponent thinks for about 45 seconds before raising to 200. Well, that's super annoying. 
any decent sizing from them and it's an easy fold, but they raise small here. As I mentioned before though, it's not the 120 I'm worried about calling, it's the bet and potential hero call I'll have to make on the Brick River against this player. I'm not sure what's going on in this session, maybe I'm playing scared money, but I don't know, I'd be really, really crushed if I got stacked and ended up down 1k for the day. So with that thought in mind, I make a disgusted fold, I still think a better spot to stack an action player will come. Staying patient and trying to remain positive, I'm still up around 200 bucks, but this session is becoming very frustrating. In this one, we're playing a five-handed bomb pot of Texaha. What is that, you ask? Well, as the name indicates, we're playing Texas Hold'em and Omaha. We're all getting dealt six cards, which we have to arrange into a Hold'em hand and an Omaha hand. Once the hands are set, you cannot change them. So I'm in the small blind, and I look down at Ace-King-Jack-333. Now, if you've never played this game, Take a moment to think about how you would split your hand. Okay, I decide to make pocket threes my hold'em hand and ace-king-jack-3 double suited my Omaha hand. I'm not banking too much on the hold'em hand, but the Omaha one has good potential. We go five ways to a single flop of queen, three, seven, two diamonds. So for the hold'em hand, I flop a set of threes, which is good, but I've played enough Texaha to know that someone could easily have a higher set already. The only glimmer of hope I have is to make quads, but guess what? I have the case 3. For the Omaha hand, best thing I got going for me are a couple of backdoor straight and flush draws, so once again, just a horrible spot. Action checks to under the gun player who leads out for 25. Cut off and button make the call. I'm not very hopeful, but I make the call. See if I can improve my Omaha hand. Big blind comes along as well. Turn comes a 10 of clubs, giving me an open-ended straight draw. I would have preferred the 10 spades, but it is what it is. Action once again checks to under the gun, who continues for a hundred, and everybody folds. Last hand for the vlog, I am under the gun one, and I look down at jack 10 of diamonds. Still trying to make something happen, I open for 15, and I get called by the button and the small blind. We go three ways to a flop of king, five, three, two diamonds. I think I can see bet and represent the king. I can hit a diamond on the turn on river, which would likely give me the best hand, but I don't really feel like betting. Getting called in one or two spots and then either giving up on the turn or continue betting into at least one sticky player in the small blind. I could also get raised and have to peel or fold, so I decide to check and action checks around. Turn comes a pretty safe looking deuce of hearts. I check for a second time and this time the button, who I perceive as a competent player, leads for 30 and the sticky small blind makes the call. I'm almost getting the right price to call, but I'm starting to feel really done with this session. I don't even fight for it and make the fold. If I'm going to be playing a flush draw this passively after opening preflop, then it's probably time to rack up and call it a day. I was in for a thousand and cash out for 1050. As I mentioned before, I really wanted to walk out of this session with a profit. It definitely affected my play in a couple of spots, but mission accomplished, I guess. I book a profit of 50 bucks. So this ended up being a pretty interesting session, uh, punting a buy-in within 15 minutes of sitting down into winning the biggest spot of my life so far, uh, into two, three hours of just being card dead, whiffing, being put into difficult spots. If you enjoyed the video, please let YouTube know, hit the thumbs up button, drop me a comment, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, good luck at the tables, and I'll catch you in the next one.